uh, from the East African country of Eritrea. I work with an organization called Priority Africa Network and it's based in Oakland, California. After Mandela, you know, came out of prison and basically apartheid was historically, you know, done with, people didn't know how to engage with Africa anymore. You know, what are the contemporary issues that they should be connecting with? Um, how should they relate to an Eritrean student or a Zimbabwean student that's in their school? Um, not knowing what's happening, not knowing what are the sources they can trust for news. Um, those are pretty much some of the questions that started the conversation. Um, you know, it's a very difficult question to answer because in the, in the sense that we understand colonialism, um, the United States never had a colony in Africa. And the engagement of Africa to of the United States to Africa had always been this very distant kind of relationship, um, more uh, concretely seen by the presence of slaves, um, uh, African slaves in the United States. So it, it, it's very different than, say, the relationship of European countries to Africa. And I would say the real connection in a very real concrete way began by students uh, coming to the United States for their studies immediately after independence. And we're talking about the early 60s here when many African government, uh, African countries began to be independent. And that's a very different kind of reality because people were going to uh, come into the United States to get their education. They were eager to return home to do nation building. There was a sense of uh, optimism. Um, then in the 1970s, um, there were huge economic crises all over Africa, which we now understand to be related with the uh, a World Bank and IMF policy known as Structural Adjustment Program. And I would say starting from the late 70s and 80s and certainly in the 90s, you see a huge wave of migration of Africans leaving home. There has been, there's very little contemporary news on Africa. And what there is, is very soundbite-ish, five minutes, oh, there was war here, oh, there was a coup here, or demonizing leaders uh, like we were, have been hearing in this conference uh, of President Mugabe of Zimbabwe. So you don't get a full sense of history and understanding from soundbites. So what we tell our constituencies is to always go back and before you engage with an issue to form a better understanding of the history. You cannot understand what's going on in a country unless you go back and read. It's very peculiar is the word someone has used. For a long time, things started going badly. The economy started going badly. Uh, Mugabe wanted to reform the constitution and stay in power longer. And you have this surge of a Labour Party uh, grassroots initiative that wanted him out called the Movement for Democratic Change. What makes it peculiar is the fact that ZANU, or ZANU-PF, and the MDC, the Movement for Democratic Change, have actually sat down to craft an agreement to create a government of national unity, which means those who are in opposition and those who have been in government are uniting to craft a new agenda and a new vision for Zimbabwe, which is unprecedented, and everyone is waiting to see what might happen. And for your students, the best I can say is it's a very, not a simple question, that they need to read uh, on daily news on what's happening to Zimbabwe, in Zimbabwe. I'm pretty confident that the students that read this, that hear this, will be agents of change.